The Twin Island Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis, known for the pristine beaches and crystal clear waters, are facing a growing threat, climate change. One of the most significant impacts is being felt in the water sector. In 2015, St. Kitts and Nevis experienced its first real drought. After that drought in 2015, water rationing became a new norm. And that was what you could say, a cultural shock for us as Kitticians and Nevisians. And so what we've seen in some instances where some persons have now begun to um, develop a level of water conservation practices because of that, because nobody wants to be without water. Well, an increasing drought will reduce our surface water supply and then we have to rely more on our wells so that keep, brings more pressure on our wells and on our aquifer will not replenish as we want to. On public health, water rationing is not really um, a good idea for us because you know we have to use water for basically everything that we have to do. And if we don't have water, therefore, then we will have to maybe sometimes um, might close down whatever facility we have because we don't want to like, we want to prevent any illnesses to our clients. No one can live without water. For the people of St. Kitts and Nevis, water stresses are inconvenient and intolerable. This disrupts critical services such as schools, health facilities and daycare centers. It can lead to workforce shutdown. Yet climate change will continue to impact rainfall patterns and precipitation with potential widespread effects on sanitation and national productivity. For early childhood, we have a number of children in our various schools. For example, this school, Victoria Road Preschool, caters for 80 children and 21 staff. When we have low pressure of water, we sometimes have to catch buckets of water and have them stored at the center. We also have disruption in the daily routine where children would have to use the bathrooms. It's not, it would not be healthy for them to be using bathroom on and on without water. As well as for the staff, we also provide meals for the children. So that disrupts the cooking process for providing the meals for the children. When we don't have any water in the school, you find the tendency for germ spreading is greater um, because we cannot high, um, clean the surfaces as we should. So water is very critical. And then we will interrupt the parents' work because we'll have to call them to tell them we do not have water to maintain the school. So you, therefore you have to come and get the children. And that is why water is so critical in the school. The government has been actively working to address these climate impacts on daily life and essential services on the Twin Islands. They have partnered with the Five Seas and the European Union to build resilience in the water sector through the installation of water storage tanks at schools, daycare centers and health facilities across both islands. Health is important to our communities. We have to ensure that every time there is an event, be it uh, man-made or natural, the health services does not go down and ensuring that people could receive the health care that they need on a daily basis. So in putting in the water, the water storage tanks, it helped a lot in ensuring that the facilities had the necessary water supply to ensure its function. Because we remember, because we are health workers, we wash our hands very often. But over the years, since the system is here, it's been much better. When we don't have water, the system, we use the system to supply water to the health center. Since we got the water, it's less stressful for us. We do not have to call the parents so that they can come to get their children because there is no water. So we have more water available. The contribution made by the European Union and the Five Seas has made significant impact that when water goes, we don't have to call parents or anything like that, but we just turn on the valve and the water flows right to the center. And if we have enough water for a couple of days, that would help us to sustain and continue the program that we offer. A total of 51 institutions benefited from water storage enhancements, either in the form of water tanks and pumping systems, or upgrades to existing water cisterns. So we have a cistern that's here. 
So rather than use those plastic tanks, we make use of, of, of units that we already have. So the system was used instead of the plastic tanks. And so the water supply from the utility comes in here and the water is stored and be ready for use in the, town, in, in, in the case of an outage. We would often refer to it as a backup system because it really helps us in times when we have issues. We have had an example where schools were closed pending a, a storm that we had here in Nevis, St. Kitts and Nevis. And some schools could not reopen because they did not have a constant clean water supply. But we were able to tap into our system and provide water for the entire school, including our cafeteria. So they were able to provide lunch for our students as well. Now this location is also unique in the fact that it serves a couple of other locations. So another 100 feet, 200 feet down the hill is a police station. So security is also involved. And there's a preschool just across the street from the police station. So this system actually serves three locations in the event there's a disruption. To further address water challenges, the Five Seas and the EU also provided the Water Service Department of St. Kitts and Nevis with ground monitoring wells that provide critical data for informed decision making. As it relates to the groundwater monitoring equipment, a total of 30 stations will be outfitted and these stations were identified by the experts within the water services both for St. Kitts and Nevis. Groundwater monitoring equipment helps relevant personnel manage water resources effectively, especially with the risks of saltwater intrusion and changing precipitation patterns due to climate change. One of the challenges with groundwater is that Technically, there's fresh water that sits on top of salt water. If you think about it, if you take off something off, 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 some, off something else, then the, the one on the bottom tends to want to rise. So if we extract too much of the fresh water, the salt water will come up. When that happens, your system becomes, becomes uh, what we call salt intrusion, salt water intrusion, and then, of course, that's just not um, consumable again. You know, it becomes unpotable. And so that has to be managed very closely. And so through the five C's and the EU, we have this, 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 this unit that helps us to, to, to do that. And if you look, we have the power supply, which is a solar panel, which goes in and supplies a battery. So at night, the battery is the power source. During the daytime, the panel, solar panel directly. And there are a couple of other configurations in here, one of which being the data collection, the uh, SIM card we send the information to an app actually. By tracking water levels, temperature, salinity and conductivity, the Water Service Department can make more informed decisions about when to stop pumping to prevent over extraction and contamination. This new proactive approach promotes sustainable water management for the future. The collaboration between the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, the Five Seas and the European Union to enhance water-related infrastructure is a vital step in building resilience against climate change. The innovative solutions have raised public awareness, prompting individuals and sectors to take similar steps towards climate-proofing their own properties. As climate change continues to impact the Caribbean, it's clear that innovative solutions and regional cooperation are essential to ensure a sustainable future. The fight against climate change is ongoing, but with determination and collective action, the twin island states of St. Kitts and Nevis can overcome these challenges and protect their precious water resources.